Hey guys, I hope that I'm live right now. If you guys are able to listen to me properly as well as there's no problem with the audio or the video, please do let me know. In the meanwhile, I will just open up the live chat on my phone as well so that I'm able to see your chats. Okay, great. <clears throat> Is there any problem with my audio or the video guys? Please do let me know. Hello everyone. Hello, hello, hello. I hope that you guys are all well. Okay, okay. That means like the audio and the video is absolutely fine. Am I right? Great. Amazing, amazing, amazing. So uh, let me first of all, uh, like just like let me know how many of you are coming to a boot camp by Devtown for the first time. Like this is your first boot camp ever that you are attending right now. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Okay, so for M, it's the first time. For Riddhi, it's the first time. For then, it's the first time. Harsh. Okay, so there are a lot many number of students um, who are for the first time itself. Okay, that's great. So, Desh, don't worry. The link will be sent to you by tonight itself. Okay, so don't worry about it. First time. Okay, so a lot many number of uh, students are coming for the first time for any of our boot camps. No issues. I will introduce myself as well as how these boot camps are structured and what will be the entire process. <clears throat> so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, we are going to learn a lot and we'll have a lot of uh, excitement and enjoyment as well throughout the way. Okay. Uh, ready? Thank you so much for asking. I'm all right right now. Okay. Okay. Uh, in the meanwhile, those students who were attending the boot camp, like who have previously attended our boot camps as well, and have some idea about the boot camps, if there are any questions that you are able to see that are uh, you are familiar with, uh, definitely try to help uh, the newcomers out. Okay. Like keep the community engaged so that if somebody has any questions or something as well, uh, they will be able to get the answer for that as well. Okay. Okay, so for example, Anand Mishra has asked, uh, will the stream be available for practice later? So if you know the answer to that, do let them know. Yes, uh, Anand Mishra, the stream would be made available on YouTube for almost eight to nine months. Okay, only after that we take the stream down. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, great. Um, okay, so let me introduce myself. I think so it's the right time to introduce myself right now. So my name is Shaurya Sinha. Uh, I am one of the mentors at DevTown. Uh, there are almost 35 more mentors along with me who are working at uh, DevTown, but I am one of those mentors who is getting the opportunity to showcase my skills on YouTube as well. I have been working in the corporate sector for almost two to three years right now. I worked in Reliance, Geo, and other companies as well as a data analyst, a data scientist, as well as a full stack web developer and a software engineer. Uh, along the way, like there were a lot many things that I've learned. I have also been one of the mentors as well as instructors on behalf of Google Explore ML program. I used to go to different universities to teach AI and ML uh, to students on behalf of Google. So uh, along the way, I've gathered a lot of knowledge and uh, as a fellow senior, it's my duty to help you guys out as well. So, okay, that's great. <clears throat> okay. The second thing is that uh, about this bootcamp that we are currently attending, this bootcamp will go on for almost uh, seven days, seven to eight days, depending upon how much time it takes to complete it. Our priority would be to complete the bootcamp properly. No matter if it takes seven days or eight days, we will be completing the bootcamp properly. The only prerequisite that I expect from you guys is just your uh, knowledge of English. Okay. And nothing else. Okay. Your knowledge of English is the most important thing. Okay. So that you are able to understand English because I will be communicating in English itself. Okay. Uh, whereas <clears throat> the rest of the stuff from programming language to Python to computer vision, everything I will be teaching you from scratch. I don't expect you guys to know anything from the beginning itself. 
okay so you guys can chill about it throughout the seven days we'll be learning python we'll be learning a bit about computer vision we will be learning about open cv as well uh, once we have completed all this we'll be focusing upon our project so that at the end of the boot camp you guys not only have the right knowledge but also a project that you can add on your resume as well this boot camp has been brought to you in partnership with uh, google uh, as well so at the end you will be getting certificates by uh, google developer groups okay so as well as from dev town so you don't have to worry about getting certificates for your resume as well there is no cost associated with these boot camps neither are the certificates having any type of cost associated with it these boot camps are brought to you 100 percent free okay the only thing that we expect from the students is that um, this is a community and if you are joining these type of boot camps and the events that we are going to organize in the next two months we expect a thorough uh, attendance okay a thorough dedication to learn and uh, helping the community out that's the only three things that we expect from our students okay okay uh great so we will be starting with our project sorry our learning of python right now okay for those who already so python is a particular language maybe some of you might know the basics of python as well but uh, do listen to me carefully uh, there will be some things that I will be adding on uh, inside the basics itself that will help you strengthen your basics. So I will be having two, three points that I know 90% of you who actually know Python won't be knowing about it because these are the things that are hidden. These are the things that you learn only when you are reading books. It won't be available to any, you in any course or something like that. So that is the reason why we have these type of boot camps just to make sure and these are the small points that will be asked to you in your interview as well in your interview they won't be asking about like what are the different data types in python like everybody knows that okay so they will be asking you the difference between float and uh, decimal or something like that like they'll be asking you some tough questions that would be harder for you to explain okay so that is the things that we'll be focusing upon uh the notes like the entire thing that I've made for this particular boot camp is in such a way that notes will already always be available to you guys from the day one. Okay, so you don't have to worry about it. Second thing, you don't have to have a laptop to complete the boot camp. But for the project, you will need a laptop or a desktop. Okay, the rest of the stuff you can do it from your mobile phone as well. The entire seven days you can code, you can practice, you can learn, you can keep the notes all from your mobile phone, from your Chrome browser itself, from your mobile phone, whether it be Android or iOS. But the project, you will be requiring a PC or a desktop or a laptop. Okay. Okay. Uh, so when you'll be starting, you will be able to see where you will be getting the notes. So don't worry about it. Okay. Uh, the project submission link for the Amazon uh, bootcamp will be sent tonight. Okay, don't worry about it. Okay. So guys, uh, shall we start off with our today's class? Please let me know. Guys, shall we start off with our today's class? Please let me know. Okay, great. So what we are going to do right now is, so let me first switch off the volume from my laptop. Okay. So this is the current video that you are looking at. Okay. So this is the video that you are currently watching. That is the live video. When you go down to the description. Okay. So I've already liked the video as well. Great. <laughs> so when you go down in the description of the video itself, you will be able to see a link to the notebook as you're able to see right over here, a link to the notebook. This is the link that you will be utilizing for uh, in the starting days to learn Python. Okay. And this will contain the notes as well, as well as some small assignments for you. Okay. So just what you can do is you can just click on this particular link. Okay. And uh, also you can just right click on this particular link and just copy the link address if you want. Otherwise, if you are not familiar with that, you can go like open it up in a new tab and then copy it from the uh, URL as well. Okay. So once you have copied the link, okay. So because I'm in the same uh, session as the session that has been created. So what I'm going to do for you guys is I'm opening it up the link. Okay. So let me go back to my desktop.
so i will open up uh, from let's say shorya okay so this is the link that will be opening up on your screens right now okay so it will look something like this what i want you to do is for example just type something random right over here and you will be able to see uh cannot save changes okay so i've just clicked right over here inside the code okay and i've just typed something random and you are able to see a message that pops up right over here cannot save changes just click on that it will say that you don't have the permission to save this notebook to keep your changes make a copy of this notebook so just click on uh, save a copy in drive that will create a new copy of this entire notebook for you that is saved on your drive itself and now you can edit and save this particular notebook as you want and you'll be utilizing this to learn about python as you're able to see i have made it in such a way that all the notes as well as some assignments examples of code how to run that code everything I have made it in such a way that at any point of time you can revise it in one go and you won't have any problems with the same. Okay. And uh, this is just a small example of what has been done. Uh, we have this for like almost the entire Python language. We are going to release that very soon on our YouTube channel uh, in like 15 days worth of Python. And we'll be starting from the utmost basic and going to at most advanced. This is uh beginning to intermediate we are not covering almost everything but in those video lectures we will be covering everything in python okay so because right now we only have seven days and we have to cover computer vision we have to cover a bit of machine learning deep learning as well as uh ai and data science as well so we don't have that much amount of time to go into a lot of depth in python but we'll try our best to reach at least intermediate level of python that is our aim so let me just repeat once again what you have to do okay so the current youtube that you are uh, seeing right now let me just open it for you guys if you are going on youtube let me just uh, so this is the video that you are currently watching right now in the description of the video itself as you are able to see we are having link to the notebook open that link to the notebook okay once you have opened it up just click next to 2 plus 7 just click next to 2 plus 7 type anything that you want any gibberish and then you will be able to see a message cannot save changes right over here on the top cannot save changes just click on this particular button and you will be able to see a message popping up cannot save changes you don't have the permission to save this notebook to keep your changes make a copy of this notebook and then you have to click on save a copy in drive that will create your own copy of this notebook and that you can edit as well as save it according to yourself okay so right over here this is how it will be created for you guys now i have my own copy so i will be utilizing that itself directly are you guys able to understand up till here let me just open up the live chat are you guys able to understand up till here please let me know guys uh Kum abhinav kumar i am not able to understand your question please be a bit more specific okay great so this is the notebook that you are going to use right now as we are able to see everything has been made in very organized manner if you still need to go a bit deeper yourself okay so there are two things right now so if you go to our channel dev town you will be able to see there are two channels so dev town and dev town 2 okay i don't know why it is named as dev town 2 we are thinking about a good name but we weren't able to come up with anything so like it's like dev town 2 point or something like that so if you go to that particular channel we have started releasing a playlist for learning c++ from scratch so this has been taught by a particular person from cisco itself okay and uh, we have taken up from the atmos scratch like from the beginning so it will start from like uh, the utmost basics of c++ and it will be going to the atmos advanced every single day we will be releasing two videos and uh, it is of 15 days long so there will be almost like 15 to 16 days that is 34 to 35 videos in total that we'll be releasing that will be covering c++ from at most scratch to the most advanced level similarly we after this entire uh, thing has been released for c++ we'll start releasing for python then for java then for javascript and so on and so forth 
So every single language we will be covering, then we'll be starting with data structures and algorithms in Java and C++. Then we'll be starting with competitive programming and so on and so forth. So everything will be made available for free. We won't be charging anything for these things. Okay. Because we want to make sure that you guys are able to enjoy the entire learning process. And you guys shouldn't be fooled around with key like, okay, this is advanced and you guys are still learning the utmost basics itself. Like I explained in the bootcamp, we will be learning from beginning to intermediate of Python. But if you are still interested to learn Python to the most advanced level, but you don't want to wait for the video lectures to release after like 11 or 12 days. Okay. So what you can do in the meanwhile is I can provide you guys to the link to the GitHub account. Okay. So. Let me just uh, remember the name. Shape AI GitHub. So Shape AI was the name for our organization before uh, 2021. Okay, so in 2020, our organization was called as Shape AI, but we renamed it to DevTown. Okay, so let me just find it for you guys. I think so. Collaboration, recipe, view all. Let's see Python basics bootcamp. Okay. This is also not the entire thing. Give me a second. Okay. Yeah. So this is one of the, uh, GitHub accounts that we have created. And as we are able to see, uh, it's almost 15 days long that covers the entire Python up from the utmost beginning, to the most advanced level, just Python. Okay, so if you guys don't want to wait for like 10 more days, so after 10 more days, the video lectures for these will be released. Okay, so right over here, these are the notes and everything that I have made and it's public for you guys as well. We'll just send you the link in the live chat if you guys want. Okay, so I've shared the link in the live chat uh, if you guys want to see that. So right over here, as you're able to see each of these, so for example, let's say, let's take up NumPy. So if you want to learn NumPy, so it is divided into three parts. Okay. And it is made in such a way that you will be easily able to understand everything. Okay. With all the notes, all the code examples, assignments, everything has been made right over here so that you guys are not facing any problems. Okay. For example, pandas is covered right over here as well. So pandas is in two parts. Okay. We have matplotlib, seaborn also covered in this, but if my suggestion would be wait for 10 more days, the videos will be released after C++ in the meanwhile, you can learn C++ as well. Okay. Okay. So let's get started with our today's class. Now Python is a particular language right now. The second most used language after like in production after JavaScript is Python. Python is the first most used language by developers and the second most used language in production itself. So by production, I mean the code that has been deployed. Okay. So that people are consumers are using. So there are two types of code. One is what pe developers are using for creating projects or testing something out or like taking up analytics. Now these things are used by the company. These things are not used by the consumer. So let's take up an example of Amazon. So maybe Amazon needs to know one particular item, how much amount of item should he or she order and keep it in stock in their warehouses along the entire world. So maybe it's a toothbrush. Okay. So uh, they are keeping almost like hundred units of toothbrush in Bangalore, hundred units of toothbrush in Ahmedabad, 50 uh, units of toothbrushes in Mumbai. So how are they able to find these things? So they will be using Python. They will be doing analytics and providing this information. They will be filling up their warehouses. Now this particular code was used by the developer to provide the analytics. The second type of code is code in production that is being used by the consumer itself. Here the consumer would be a person like me who is going to order a toothbrush from a particular company. Now this type of people are going to use a product and that product is the Amazon website and the code behind the Amazon website that creates the Amazon website that the user is using is also a particular code that is called as a code in production. 
okay so that is the difference between the two so python is the number one in code that is being used by the developer and language that is being used by the developer and two uh, and second in the language that is in the production itself okay python is used in almost everywhere from data analytics to big data to web development to game development so every single aspect from blockchain all the big technologies that you continuously learn and hear about everywhere python is being used so learning python is one of the most easiest language to learn as well now if you are starting off with python as your first language usually my suggestion to you would be don't do it okay because um, let's see if i uh, tell you that okay this is an automatic car and i will teach you automatic car directly you don't know how to ride a cycle you don't know how to ride a scooty you don't know how to ride a bike you don't know how to ride a manual car i teach you an automatic car directly okay that is the most easiest vehicle to ride then it will become very difficult for you to learn every single of other vehicles as well it will become very difficult for you to learn the other vehicles how to ride other vehicles because you have now learned to live your life easy okay the same goes with python as well python is the most simplest language to learn because it resembles english like it's like if you are able to read through the code as well you will be able to understand it very easily it will look like somebody has very poor grammar and has written something in english itself you will be able to understand it like that so that's the thing with python it's very easy to learn okay so no issues in that but we will help you guys out don't worry about it okay so let's start directly with the coding section itself whenever you start to learn any new language at any point of time as a programmer there are some conventions okay so as an indian as well so many of you might be indians right over here okay, some of you might be foreigners as well so no issues but i will tell you there is one tradition in india whenever you start any new uh, thing any new uh, work okay it's very auspicious to eat curd and sugar before that similarly in programming as well whenever you start learning any programming language okay just start okay it's not that if you do this it's completed okay of course you have a lot of work to do as well but um, whenever you start any programming language uh, the first thing that you have to do is write hello world in that language okay so before we start off with like the print function in python let's just print hello world in python okay so it's very simple guys let me just uh, open up a coding block right over here and to print something out in python so like i'm able to say okay you want to print something out in python to print it out in python you just have to write print then in parenthesis you have to write what do you want to print i want to print hello world okay so hello world in your quotation marks okay now this is python python does not has any semicolon inside of it so if you are learning java c++ or javascript or any other language as well the code will look something like this at the end there will be a semicolon but this is python python does not have any type of semicolon inside of it once you have done this to run this particular line of code what you have to do is there are two ways to run this line of code either you have to click on shift and then enter okay so shift and then enter or the second option is to click on this particular play button on the left hand side okay this particular play button on the left hand side so this is basically that google is saying that this is a notebook from github do you want to run it or not so you just click on run anyway okay so it will allocate some resources connect you to those resources in initiate your instance and then it will run your code now um no one actually asked like there was one question that i was actually waiting for someone to ask me that uh, why are we using this like why are we not coding it on our laptops or something like that so i will answer you like what is collab why we are using collab why is it better than running your code locally itself so we'll be answering that later on let's try to first learn some python okay so as you are able to see our code ran properly and we got hello world printed out as our output so now that we have printed hello world as our output we can now proceed further 
okay and learn about the print function okay you'll be seeing this print function very frequently in python programming every language has something like this associated with it okay so maybe it's like console.log in let's say uh, javascript or println in uh, let's say java or maybe uh, uh, c out in c++ so every language has a type of print function inside of it in python it's extremely easy you just have to write python then in parenthesis whatever we want to print it out as well okay so it helps us to see what exactly is happening in our code so for example you have like one lakh lines of code how are you going to check the entire code line by line you don't have time to go through one lakh lines of code to check it out so what you do is after every hundred lines of code or like every thousand lines of code you will set up a print statement to check something okay so check whether all the above lines are working properly if it's working properly the output up till here should be like maybe 100 print this particular value out okay now when you are looking at your console when you are looking at what are the outputs after you have run one lakh uh, lines of code you will be able to see where your code went wrong along the output so as you are able to see this hello world so every thousand lines of code whatever the output should be you will be printing it out and you will be comparing it by the actual numbers as soon as uh, the output went wrong you can you know the exact block of code the exact 100 lines of code that you have to check that okay whatever error is it's between this particular print block and this particular print line so these two lines whatever the problem is is between them because up till here the output was correct up till here the print was correct from here the print has went wrong so whatever the problem is is between these two print lines so that makes your work easy there are various reasons to use print statement right now as you're just starting to program okay so you won't be able to like get that idea of why we are using print i am not able to get it but just to sh maybe showcase your output to someone you want to see the output you want to print something out in the screen so there's a lot of different things that you have to do okay okay great the next thing we are going to do is we are going to see uh addition and multiplication in python so if you are writing 2 plus 7 right over here in python you will be able to get 9 okay similarly uh it's directly printing you don't require a print statement right over here but if i'm going to the next line of code that is 2 into 7 okay so in the first line of code python is doing 2 plus 7 that is 9 in the second line of code it's 2 into 7 that is 14 but when i'm printing it 9 is not getting printed on our screen only 14 is getting printed i'm not able to understand why why is this happening the reason for the same is python goes line by line and starts executing your code the first line of code as soon as python comes here it calculates okay 2 plus 7 yeah it's 9 i know that but what to do with this particular 9 i'm not able to understand so nevertheless there's one more line of code i will go there okay so as soon as python comes to the next line of code it has already forgotten that there is a 9 that it has somewhere in its memory it has already forgotten about it now again python looks at it okay 2 into 7 that is 14 okay so now there's no more lines of code okay so whatever the last output is i will just put it on the screen so you are able to get 14 right over here now this is one of the reasons why you need a print statement if you wanted to show the output for both the things you will have to select it put it into parenthesis put a print statement right over here okay and then you will be able to get both 9 and 14 on your screen now this is not a good way to write a code if you want to put something on your screen even though if it's the last line of code you should put it up in a print statement itself okay you should never put it up separately it should always come with a print statement okay that's the better way of writing a code so let's run it right over here you are able to get both 9 and 14 on your screen okay so as you are able to see this is the changes that you had to do so some people are having some questions i guess uh simran sharma if we write code in c plus plus or java then we have to write the whole code from scratch when we work with open cv library but when we use python it's easy because there is default library python okay so one more thing <clears throat> 
why python is not the so we'll come back to this when we'll be learning uh, cv okay somebody just remind me whenever we'll be starting to learn open cv i will tell you guys a very important thing as well python is used for development experimentation and research it is never used in production it's rarely used in production but the entire product team would have to learn python to develop the item first there's a reason for that and i will let you guys know that at a later point of time okay Will we perform data structures and algorithms in Python as well in the bootcamp? Ankit, it takes three months to learn data structures and algorithms. You have seven days to learn Python as well as computer, uh, sorry, as well as uh, OpenCV and a project. So we, like I said, we won't be diving into the advanced concepts in Python, but yes, we would be looking at like tuples, dictionaries, lists. These will be the things that we'll be touching upon. Okay. So hello world, we have already printed in Python, no need to do that again. Okay, so variables. Understanding variables is very important in any programming language. They are used all the time in Python as well. Using variables in place of direct numbers have various advantages, but let us look at it via an example. So because I uh, mostly feel that examples are something that helps students understand most of the concepts very easily. I usually prefer to teach uh, via examples as well. We'll be going from uh, beginner to intermediate. We won't be going to advance. Like I said, after 10 to 12 days uh, on DevTown 2 channel, that is the second channel that we are having. Right now we are releasing C++ from beginning to advance. Once that has been released in the next 10 days, after that, we'll be releasing Python from basics to the most advanced level. In that, we'll be covering everything in Python. And then we'll be releasing for Java. After that, we'll be releasing for JavaScript. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we'll be doing the project on the last day itself. So let's start with the same variables in Python. Let's try to understand this. And of course, guys, for the certificates, you need to have attendance on a daily basis. For example, if the bootcamp is of seven days, then seven days of attendance is required. The criteria for certificates, how you are going to get the attendance, everything I will be letting you guys know at the end of today's bootcamp, not right now. Okay, let's focus upon the learning aspect of the uh, language itself. Okay, so let's say that you are a programmer. Okay, so nerdy specs, uh, some of them very like bland hair and uh, a nose a mouth uh, yeah so you are a programmer right over here and some body as well <laughs> okay so you have recently moved to bangalore okay you moved to bangalore you are having an amazing salary your salary is like let's say um one lakh rupees a month okay so yeah that is your salary one lakh rupees a month <clears throat> you are uh, going to a gym as well so let's say that uh, you are currently going to a gym that has a membership of five thousand uh you are also uh let's say uh okay so what can you do so your maid and your everything else like whatever your household uh, expenses are that is also five thousand so five thousand for gym okay so five thousand for expense as well okay then uh, you are having let's say a rent of twenty five thousand so twenty five thousand is your rent okay so you are having some expenses then uh, your taxation so as you are earning a lakh per month your tax is 30 percent so 30 percent you have to pay to the government as well that's your tax okay now your uh, landlady okay came into like uh, the idea th uh, that okay so you are a software engineer so this is your landlady let's say let's put our uh, bun as well okay and she's mean so she came to know about your uh, salary and she's like, no, 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 I'm charging very less rent from you. You can afford more. I thought you were a student. So now your rent is now increased to 30,000. Okay, so she has increased your rent to 30,000. Now, once before she had increased your rent, you had created an entire program. Okay, so you had created a 10,000 lines of code. Okay, 10,000 lines of code that handled every 
uh, one of your expenses filing up taxes showing you how much uh, money that you are having in the bank how much savings you are having how much money you are going to have in the next month and so on and so forth you have like 10,000 lines of code that you had coded already okay you had no concept of variables at that particular point of time okay you coded the entire thing uh before the rent was increased so you started doing it okay so you are like okay so i have to pay 30 percent tax so whatever i have to pay okay if you have created a function and that is like 30 percent like 30 divided by 100 multiplied by 1 lakh okay that is what you have to pay then uh whatever this amount is you will have to subtract it from 1 lakh okay so 1 lakh minus 30 divided by 100 into 1 lakh is the money that is left to you after taxations then you will have to subtract your rent right over here you will have to subtract your gym expenses your normal expenses and so on and so forth so there's a lot of uh, different things that you are having right over here a lot of calculations that you will have to do throughout the way now when your landlady increases your rent to 30,000 okay or maybe your gym membership has now increased to 6000 okay what you would have to do is you will have to go back to the entire 10000 lines of code find every single place where like it is like 25000 and you will have to update it to 30000 again every single time something changes you will have to go to 10000 lines of code now some of you might be like sir that's bullshit i don't have to go to like 10000 lines of code it's very simple i will just do a control f and i will find all the places where there are 25000 and i will uh, replace it with control r to 30000 i'm like very good but what if if your gym membership ex uh, increases how do you know that this particular thing is for gym this 5000 is for gym and this 5000 is for your expense they look both the same you have no idea whether one is for gym or the other one is for expense. You'll have to go through every line trying to understand what you have done right over there. Now, this is the place where variables make your life extremely easy. For example, if somebody has a very long name, South Indian people usually have a very long name associated with themselves. Okay. It will be something, 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 something like there are like five, six different big names that you don't even remember properly. Every single time, would you be calling them by your, their entire name? Would you be calling me by Shaurya Rakesh Sina? Would you be calling me by my entire name itself? No, that is not like appropriate. Maybe you have a pet name for me, a nickname for me, maybe some abusive language that you are going to use if I'm your friend. So you have some smaller uh, items that has been attached to a particular person that you usually use to identify them. Okay, the same goes on with code as well. Okay, so for example, you are creating just a second. My laptop not having enough charge. Shit. Um, uh, give me a second, guys. I will just uh, plug in my laptop right now. Otherwise, it will just close off and we won't be able to have a session. So give me a, uh, give me two seconds. Okay, give me two seconds. Yeah, uh, am I audible guys? Please let me know. Yeah, the session timing is from 7 to 8 itself. Great. Uh, maybe sometimes the session might extend a bit as well. It might go up till 8.30. Okay. That is also a possibility. We need to make sure that we are able to learn everything properly. Um, certificates are not important. I've taken hiring drives from multiple companies. 
certificates are never important okay the only thing is important is your knowledge the certificate is only okay so you are having a certificate of python okay let me know what is this if you're not able to answer that particular question properly that certificate and everything in else in your resume is entirely false you are promoting false things you don't know shit and you are putting lies in your resume that's the only thing certificates are for okay so always remember that so okay so where were we yeah so what we can do so we can like just give a pet name to each of these numbers so for example one lakh is equals to sal let's put up a pet name to that so then you are having like jim is equals to 5000 okay you are having your expense exp is equals to let's say 5000 okay you are having a uh, rent again a pet name equal to 25000 okay you are having tax is equals to 0 0.3 okay then uh, what you can do right now is you can then go back like we said sal is equals to 1 lakh now when you are writing your code instead of doing all these addition multiplications like this you can use the pet names that you have currently made okay so instead of writing this what you will be writing is sal minus tax into sal minus rent minus gym minus exp Okay, so in your 10,000 lines of code, wherever you are having any particular value, it is now represented by this particular pet name. Okay, now if your rent is increased from 25,000 to 30,000, okay, you don't have to go through the 10,000 lines of code to actually like change it. You don't need to do that. What you need to do is you just have to come to this particular line of code. You have to update the value of rent to 30,000 and wherever now rent is there in the rest of the 10,000 lines of code, it is automatically upgraded to the new value. Automatically. You don't even have to go to the 30,000 lines of code. You don't even have to look at it. The only thing that you have to change is just one line of code. Okay. Are you guys able to understand this example? that I will be able to like move on from here and explain you variables now in a proper manner. This is just an example, uh, but now we'll be learning variables in a proper manner. Are you guys able to understand up till here? Please let me know. Do you guys have any uh, questions up till here? Please let me know guys. Okay. and be responsive on the live chat if i'm asking that you guys have understood or not let me know because that is how i'm able to understand that okay these many students are actually paying attention uh, or are not paying attention or able to understand or not able to understand so it's very important to be interactive in the live chat okay great so let's try to understand uh, the second particular portion okay so what are variables let's let's think about variables as boxes okay so this is a particular box, uh, let's say that and the name of this particular box is sal, okay that is salary. So the name of this particular variable is sal, so the name of this particular box is sal, okay. So if you are writing sal is equals to 1 lakh, okay this is how you create a variable in python, okay sal is equals to 1 lakh. Whenever you are writing something like this what you are actually doing is you are creating a box called as salary. Okay, that is sal and you're putting a value of 1 lakh inside of it. So you're taking a value of 1 lakh, whatever is there on the right hand side and you're putting it up inside your sal. Now whenever you are using sal, it represents wherever in your code you are using sal, you are in fact, so for example, so we are doing sal is equals to sal into, oh sorry, divided by 100. Okay, if I'm writing something like this, sal on the right hand side if sal exists on the right hand side it represents the value that it contains so here sal is on the right hand side so it contains the value 1 lakh so it's 1 lakh on the right hand side okay and if sal exists on the left hand side so this is the sal if sal exists on the left hand side it represents the box. 
it represents the box okay so what this is saying is box sal is equals to 1 lakh divided by 100 that is 1000 so now the value 1 lakh inside the box has been replaced by 1000 this is what it means okay this is the entire thing and now we'll look at this in code okay let's go back to our code right over here so using variables in place of direct numbers have many advantages like we have learned in the landlord example variables are used to store information to be referenced and manipulated in a computer program that is if it is on the right hand side then it is to be referenced that is the value that it contains and manipulated if it is on left hand side basically you are manipulating the value that is inside of it okay creating a new variable in python is very simple let's create one together so here we have created a variable called as month that contains a value of 12 inside of it and whenever you are using the word month it refers to the value that it contains okay so if i'm running this particular line of code we are able to see that we'll get 12 printed out on our screens because month refers to the value that it contains that is 12 okay so we have a small assignment for you guys if you get time try to complete these small assignments as well a bit of practice is always very helpful in programming okay in any case whatever term is on the left hand side is now a name for whatever term value is on the right hand side once a value has been assigned to a variable name you can access the value from the variable name itself okay so for example right over here let's take this particular example what will be the output okay so we are having let's uh, go back to our drawing board uh we are having a is equals to 3 b is equals to a a is equals to a plus 3 what now i want you guys to write in the live chat a comma b what will be the value of a comma b so maybe a is 0 and b is 45 so write 0 comma 45 in the live chat if these three lines of code are executed what will be the value of a and b guys what will be the value of a and b please read the entire thing properly a is equals to 3 b is equals to a a is equals to a plus 3 so what will be the value of a and b please put it up in live chat as the first value of a comma b okay so most of you have written the correct answer that is 6 comma 3 let's try to understand why that happens okay so the first line of code so let me just erase everything else from right over here that we are able to start off with a clean slate So, put it up here. See, so once we are running the first line of code, what we are doing is we are creating a particular variable called as a. So, a box called as a that has a value of 3 inside of it. Okay. Then we are creating a box b. Okay. So, the second line of code is creating a box b. Now, a is on the right hand side. A is on the right hand side means that the value of A that is 3. So we are going to put 3 inside of it. It's not that. Okay, so this is correct. Okay, so this is correct because A is on the right hand side. So we are putting the value of A inside of B. Now those people who are thinking about it in such a way that it's B. And then we are putting a box A that contains the value 3 inside of it. Now this is false. Okay, this is not true. A is on the right hand side if a is on the right hand side that means it represents the value that it contains so 3 is being put inside of b not a okay so b is not equal to a b is equal to the value present inside of a that is 3 that is 3 as a value okay then the next line of code is a is equal to a plus 3 so we're just increasing the value inside of a by 3 that is now the new value of a is 6 and the value of b is 3 so the answer is 6 comma 3 are you guys able to understand up till here please let me know
Are you guys able to understand up till here, guys? Please let me know. Great. So whenever so whenever you are going to use any particular variable, you have to declare it. Okay, you have to tell the world that this is Shorya Sinha. Only then they will be able to call him. Na, if I'm not telling you my name, how will you be able to call me? You don't know my name. You won't be able to call me. You won't be able to use me. Similarly, whenever you want to use a particular variable, you want to create that variable. You want to store some value inside that variable itself. So you will always have to do like a is equal to three or b is equals to a. Put some value inside of it so that you are able to use it. Okay. So right over here, I'm not creating any variable x. I'm directly using print x. Python does not know what x is. So it will give you a error as you are able to see it is giving you a name error name x is not defined basically python is telling you that i don't know what this x is is this your ex girlfriend is this your ex house is that your ex place i don't know if it's an algebra x i don't know about it i'm leaving it right over here okay so it gives you an error so always declare a particular variable put a value inside that variable and then use it okay so multiple assignment operator, suppose you are making a program wherein you enter the dimensions of the tank and it gives you the tanks output. Okay. So you can use like write your code right over here as height is equals to three length is equals to six width is equals to two. So we created three variables. We declared it. We put some values inside of it. That is okay. Then we created another variable called as volume. And volume is equal to height into length into width. Okay, the multiplication of height, length, width to create volume. Understandable. Great. Awesome. Now you are printing the volume. The volume should be printing 3 into 6 into 2. That is 36. As soon as I am running this particular line of code, you are able to see 36 being printed on your screen right now. Okay. Now, one of the best things about Python, why people use Python all the time is, it helps you make your code shorter, cleaner and efficient. For example, this entire code, which you have written in almost five lines, you can reduce it to just like three lines of code and even less as well. If you want just three lines of code is more than sufficient to create this entire thing, but you have used like five lines of code. So Python will help you right over there. Now Python has a very useful way to assign multiple variables together in a single line using Python assignments like this multiple assignment operator. So instead of writing three lines like height is equal to three length is equal to six width is equal to two. You can do it in just one line by writing height comma length comma width. Okay, so height length width separated by commas is equals to their respective value separated by commas as well. 3, 6 and 2. So height will, so 3 will be assigned. The value 3 will be assigned to the first variable that is height. The value 6 will be assigned to the second variable that is length. And the value 2 will be assigned to the third variable called as width. And similarly, volume is equal to height into length into width. As soon as you are printing volume, you are getting the same output that is 36. The output is not changing at all. And we will be coming back to this uh, in like tomorrow or day after tomorrow. We'll be starting to learn tuples. We'll be coming back to this. This basically is a byproduct of tuples, a data structure that uh, is available in Python. So we are not learning about it right now, but on the day three or day two, we will be coming there. So we'll be learning about it at that point of time. You don't have to worry. So we have learned how to create a variable. We have looked at multiple variable op uh, operations as well, operator as well. Now, when, every time you are creating a variable, you are actually going to name it. Okay. So there are some conventions, some rules and regulations that you need to follow while naming a variable as well in Python. Okay. Sometimes uh, it's like you will be learning about uh, naming conventions in like every single language. Most of these naming conventions are usually the same, but one or two differences when you go from one language to the other, but you should be very familiar with this. Don't worry if you're not able to remember everything with time and with practice, you will start to remember most of the stuff. Uh, coding is all about practice. If you want to code, you have to practice. Okay. Without that, you won't be able to do shit. Okay. 
uh right now the plan is three days on python then we'll be spending three days on open cv and then we'll be having our projects that is the plan but maybe open cv may go up till four days as well so three days of python four days of open cp and then one day of uh, project so it may be possible but i will try to make it three three and one okay <coughs> Okay, so rule one, you should start the variable name with an alphabet or an underscore. Okay, you should start. Uh, so whenever you are starting to name a variable, maybe you are naming it length or width or height. Okay, just start with an alphabet. It can be a small letter. It can be a capital letter or an underscore. Nothing else. Okay, you cannot start a variable name with a number. Rule three: You cannot start a variable name with a number. Okay, you can only start it with a small letter, a capital letter, or an underscore. Okay, a variable name can only contain capital A to Z, small a to Z, zero to nine, and an underscore. Although you cannot start a variable name with a number, but you can still contain a variable name uh, like z number inside a variable name. So 007 James Bond is not a valid variable name, but James Bond 007 is a valid variable name. Okay. Uh, next thing is you cannot use special characters with variable names such as dollar sign, percentage, hash, ampersand, at rate. Okay, you cannot use some special hyphen or these type of characters. Special characters are not allowed inside the variable name or outside as well. Okay, yes, underscore can be utilized in uh, wherever you want inside a variable name. Okay, variable names are case sensitive. That means small str capital str where all the letters str are capital where any of them are capital all these will be considered as different variable names okay so python is a case sensitive language guys okay please always remember this uh, i will be answering those uh pratyosha we will be answering those questions okay don't worry uh, after this thing is over, variable name uh, wing convention, I will let you guys know why we are using collab and why it's better for you as well. Okay. Do not use reserved keywords as a variable name in uh, as a variable name in Python. What do you mean by reserved keywords? There are some uh, words in Python that already have some meaning inside of it. So maybe print. You cannot use print as a variable name. You cannot use class for is else try from. All these are reserved keywords. They already have some special meaning in Python. Uh, you will be like, if sir, I cannot remember all these words uh, from the day one. Nobody is expecting you to do that as well. There are two things that you can do is, first of all, whenever you are using a particular variable name that is already a reserved keyword, it will become highlighted. As you are able to see, print is yellow in color. Whereas the rest of the variables are usually white in color. So this syntax highlighting, this is called a syntax highlighting would be able to help you guys up. And also along with practice, you will be able to know about the words that are keywords in Python. So you will be able to start to remember it as well. Okay. Okay. So allowed variable names, so as we are able to see that X, Y, my Python, my underscore Python, underscore my underscore Python, underscore my Python, my Python, all caps, my Python, my Python 7. These are all allowed variable names. You will have no issues with them. Okay. Now variable names that are not allowed, for example, 7. So it starts with a number. It's not allowed. Hyphen, my Python, not allowed. It starts, it contains an hyphen my pi at rate thon so at rate again the special character cannot be allowed my space python you cannot have a space inside a variable name it will be considered as two different variables and my hasn't been uh, declared okay so two variables with my not being declared for is equals to so for is a reserved keyword as we are able to see it's getting highlighted you cannot use a reserved keywords so if you are running these type of uh, lines of code you will be able to get a syntax error Syntax is basically grammar. So for example, in English, if you're doing something wrong, if you're using wrong grammatical, if you're making grammatical errors, basically you're getting grammatical errors itself. And in 
coding if you are making some grammatical errors like errors with the syntax so you are getting syntax errors so grammar in coding is called as syntax okay always remember that here are some naming conventions that need to be followed so these were the rules if you're not following these rules you will be getting some syntax error you will be getting an error right over there now these are some conventions these are two conventions that you need to follow although if you're not following these two conventions you won't get a syntax error your code will work absolutely fine you won't get a syntax error but if you're not following these conventions that means that you are a poor programmer you don't know the basic etiquettes of programming in python for example if you're sitting on a table okay and uh, you are eating like a directly from the bowl itself okay you are not using your hands or fork or spoon or something like that you are just taking up the entire dish and just start eating uh, up uh, before everybody you would you don't have the right etiquette it's not that you are not eating okay you are eating you are not doing anything wrong but this is just not the convention to eat similarly there are some conventions although not following them might uh, like your code will work absolutely fine there will be no problem with the same but you would be called as a poor programmer so these conventions are also something that you learn along with time you don't know it from the start but i have told you two conventions right over here so that you guys are able to follow it from the start itself right the first convention is try to keep the name of the variable descriptive but short okay so it should be short but descriptive it shouldn't be like for example we are taking the height of a tree uh, the appropriate variable name for the height of a tree that is the variable that you want to create would will be just height okay you will not put x that is very short okay it's not descriptive at all h it's very short not descriptive what is h i don't know okay you won't put something like height of the tree this is although it's descriptive but it's like very long this is a very long uh, variable name it should be short but descriptive so height is an ideal variable name okay also the pythonic way for naming the variables is to use all lowercase letters and underscores to separate the word so for example even if you are putting up a variable called as height of the tree everything should be <clears throat> in underscores itself and separated by sorry everything should be in lower case uh, characters itself and all the words should be separated by an underscore that is the pythonic way of uh, writing a variable name and this is called as snake case okay this is called as snake case because it's all lower case and is uh, connected with underscores so it looks like a snake okay okay so right over here if i'm uh, removing this particular line of code and as you are able to see so there are two variables my long everything in capital my lat in which the first letter is capital so even if you are running this particular line of course you are not getting a syntax error everything works properly but you should avoid it as it's not the pythonic way to name a variable okay the pythonic way would be my underscore long all in small letters itself okay so we will stop right over here i will continue from here from tomorrow itself okay now the main question somebody asked me and i forgot to answer it properly uh why are we using google collab why not are we working locally itself now there are two reasons uh so first of all let me tell you guys about google collab itself google collab is a free tool provided by google to you guys to be able to learn <clears throat> data science okay this is a tool that has been made by data scientists for data scientists okay anybody who wants to learn data science this is the go to tool for you now what happens is data science is a particular subject in data science it covers machine learning ai uh, deep learning all these different buzzwords that you are able to hear we will learn about that as well what are the meaning behind those words why are they using it and all those kind of stuff now these are very like intensive uh, programming uh, stuff okay so whatever programs that you will be developing that is utilizing data science in general this is very like hardware intensive it requires a lot of cpu it requires a lot of gpu to be able to run and it might cause if you are running all these codes so this is very simple this is normal python 
okay but if you are running big data science based projects on your laptop it might take up the entire disk space it might take up your entire ram and i have already lost two of my laptops because of this one was i7 9th generation and the other was one ryzen 7 okay two laptops have already lost due to running the entire stuff locally itself these codes will run 24 hours for like three or four days at a time continuously to be able to generate an output for you guys now most of the computers that you guys are having might not have the best cpu the best ram available to you guys but google has google has a lot of servers that it contains uh, and most of these servers are usually free at all times so what they did was that and these servers are very high-end servers these contain the like 11th gen, 12th gen Intel processor, 9th gen Ryzen processor. It contains the Tesla GPU. So Tesla GPU is basically a GPU that costs 9 lakhs. Just the GPU costs 9 lakhs. It's more than like all of our laptops combined together as well. And that is not just the thing. So CPU is the most like uh, smallest unit of uh, power when it comes to computational power. Then it comes the GPU and then comes the god level processors called as tpus tensor processing units that has been developed by google itself for just data science yes now the new phones that google is actually using that your pixel and the other phones that are currently coming they have tensor chips inside of that because to make these graphical computational computations like thousand times more powerful so like if GPU is taking like three, uh, let's say GPU is taking three days to compile your code and run it. GPU will take three hours and TPU will take just 30 minutes to do the same thing. And Colab provides GPUs, CPUs and TPUs for free for you to use. You don't have to pay anything to Colab. Although there's a pro level also available, but that is not for you guys. Okay. Google has made it in such a way that you can directly start it, start using this entire stuff. And like whenever you will be going into a particular company, they will provide you with like better tools than this. But as a like a starter so data scientist or like data analyst, this is more than sufficient. You're not utilizing any of your computer resources. You're just opening up a browser. This entire thing, whatever you are currently doing right over here is getting sent back to the servers at Google. It is being computed right over there. And then the result is just sent back to you. So on your laptop, the only thing that you're currently using is your browser, Chrome browser and nothing else. Okay. Just your Chrome browser and nothing else. Is it buffering? I don't know. It's showing stable connectivity. I don't know why Richa it's buffering from your end. So that is the reason why we are using Colab and not doing it locally. Okay. Um, for the project, we won't be able to use Colab because Colab is not able to get the access to your webcams. Okay. So of course for the project, we'll be utilizing the webcam to like showcase the entire project to you guys as well. So Colab is a browser based environment. It is not able to access your webcam. We can go around the uh, stuff as well, but you guys will find it very difficult. So just for simplicity sake, just for the project, we'll be using uh, like coding locally. The rest of the stuff will be doing it directly on Google Colab itself. Okay. Okay, great. Uh, Harshit Kumar, this entire notebook, this is what we are going to do in Python. Okay. If there is something else that is required for the project, we will definitely learn that as well. But this entire notebook will be finishing for Python. Okay, so you can just go through the entire notebook to find the topics. Okay. Okay, great. So once that is done, let's go to the attendance. Now attendance is something that will be showed in the class. It will be closed at 12 midnight every single day. Every single day before 12 midnight, you have to fill up your attendance link. Okay. Um, for the certificates itself, there are two certificates that will be made available. The first one is a certificate by DevTown that basically says that you had attended this uh, bootcamp and you completed it. Okay. Now that will be given to those people who will be having 100% attendance. That is all seven days they have attended the session, completed the session, filled up the attendance link on a daily basis. Those guys will be getting the DevTown certificates. Now we'll be doing the project after that. The, we'll be sending you a link where you have to submit the project. 
okay whatever you the project you have done you will have to submit it how to submit the project where to submit the project will be telling you guys later on itself okay so at that point of time uh, when you will be submitting the project those people who will be having 100% attendance as well as the correct project submitted those will be getting the certificates via google okay that they have attended this entire session and they have learned this this, this topics during the session itself okay everything is for free nothing is chargeable right over here okay so you don't have to worry about that the only thing that we want from you guys is your support while doing the entire stuff so please help us guys like if it's possible uh there are like almost 300 of you live right now so if it's possible do like the video okay uh subscribe to the channel it really helps us a lot and so we are also able to conduct these type of boot camps in the future so from like the 16th or 17th of june we'll be having two boot camps at the same point of time so we'll be having back to back boot camps one boot camp will be of web development the second boot camp will be of data science we'll be bringing in some industry experts as well who are like uh, the leaders for example the tech expert at uh, phone pay the uh, technology head at phone pay uh, product managers at misho and all these kind of people will be product managers at uh, flipkart so they will be coming here software engineers at different companies to help you guys out guide you guys as well the only thing that we uh, require from you guys is your support so like i am able to say please do like the video okay um, also subscribe to the channel if it's possible okay uh, like for example there are 324 of you right now live with us so it would be better if i am able to see like at least 300 of you actually liking the video okay it takes 1 second but it helps us a lot it keeps us motivated as well so that we are also able to bring you boot camps every single week with a new boot camp with a new topic with a new project inside of it and this is for free we don't charge anything for this uh, we don't have like any sort of uh, like we don't have anything uh, considered to this boot camp the only thing that we want is your support and nothing else okay okay great now the boot camp the attendance for the boot camp itself um i'll be showing you uh, every single day the attendance link would be something different it, every single day i will have different ways of showing you the attendance link so that you guys have to watch the entire session live you will not be able to get the link from anywhere else if anybody is caught sharing the attendance link okay he or she would be banned permanently from all the events at devtown they won't be able to get any certificates at devtown the second thing would be they will also be banned with google as well also uh, why i am asking you to like the video subscribe to the channel there is a reason behind it so as our community is growing continuously it becomes easier for us to collaborate with like google microsoft amazon to be able to bring you these boot camps and the certificates as well right now we have collaborated with google from the next boot camp we are going to collaborate with microsoft as well so you will be getting certificates from both google and microsoft from the next boot camp we are trying to collaborate with like cisco github as well as uh, amazon as well but it all depends upon how fast the community is growing so that is the reason why we asked you guys that to like the video and subscribe to the channel although you might feel that it's a bit petty but uh, at the end of the day it will help you guys out so it becomes easier for us to provide the results and it becomes easier for you to get more number of certificates so it's like a win win situation for both of us okay so that's great so let me show you the attendance link for today again every single day the method of showing the attendance link would be different maybe today i'm showing a qr code maybe tomorrow i'll be just telling you guys where the attendance link is saved maybe day after tomorrow i won't be even showing you the attendance link okay so all these different stuff will be different for every single day so right over here is the attendance link as you are able to see okay you can take a screenshot for the same okay you can uh, like do something else as well that's totally up to you so whatsapp groups are full start a new group nikhil let's do one thing tomorrow i will create a new whatsapp group as well i will share it with uh, you guys on the live chat and those who haven't joined any whatsapp group can join those groups as well will that be fine with you guys please let me know will that be fine with you guys please let me know
uh, like I said, I issue uh, the link for the Amazon clone project submission will be sent to you on your WhatsApp groups tonight. Okay. I've already told my team to send it tonight itself. Okay. Don't worry about it. Okay. So any other questions, guys, do you have any questions for me? Please let me know. Tomorrow after the bootcamp, we'll try to have a live session on Instagram as well. So I will go live. If you want to join us, uh, you can join us as well. If you have any questions that you want to ask me directly, you can do that as well. Okay. So any other questions guys that you are having or uh, we can continue from here. Uh, just like a normal QR code, you can scan it like via your mobile phone, via Google lens or any other uh, camera as well. Okay. Yeah, are you using a QR code for the first time? Like it's a QR code. You have to scan it using your mobile phone. Please show sample certificate. Uh, I think so. I'm having a sample certificate. I'm also not very sure of it. Let me check. Okay, let me do one thing. Let me show it the sample certificate to you tomorrow. I will keep that in mind. Okay. Dude, what's wrong with you guys? Like, it's a QR code. Like, everybody knows how to scan a QR code. Just download an app or use Google Lens. If you guys are having a, just a mobile phone, you just have to scan a QR code. Secondly, this is a YouTube video. You can scroll like if you have missed the QR code, you can just revert the video back a bit and just like pause it and watch the QR code again. And like you guys need to have a higher IQ than this. You are Indians. Indians are considered to be one of the most like higher IQ people around the world how you guys will like just what will happen don't do like this okay so let's meet tomorrow guys please be on time attend the sessions live okay never miss a particular session tomorrow will again be live at 7 to 8 every single day 7 to 8 or 7 to 8 30 from 7 will be starting please be on time and then we will uh, like go with the same again the attendance link will be open up till midnight itself okay it won't be open after that okay so thank you so much guys and uh, we'll meet tomorrow again please be on time it will be awesome to meet you guys tomorrow as well and i hope that you guys will be able to learn something new every single day thank you so much guys thank you